Right then. So, as soon as Danny, the cameraman, shafted me and deleted, I think, a 10-minute video that I recorded before we went on the track day. Exactly. So, I've got to uh, sort of piece things back together and remember what we talked about. But it, there might have appeared to have been a gap before I we went up racing with some stuff. But we'll talk about it now. And, uh, well, went to track day, should I say. <clears throat> we could talk about that now because we're in preparation for another test day at Silverstone GP, so this is going to probably be the last one this car gets before the Burkitt, which I'm not going to be at that test because that's the day my girlfriend's due to have our second baby, so I'm not allowed to go two hours away, which is a shame. Um, <clears throat> so one of the problems we faced when we were first doing the alignment before we got it on the dyno the first time, were getting rid of the, the camber angle. So the problem we've got is, this is the old strut, all ins. So this was the top mount, it bolted up like a standard Mark IV Golf top mount does, just straight on the top. These are a bit strange, they've got quite an uh, angle on the bottom of that, which is quite a few competition dampers seem to have that, so should work but these didn't work for us. So what we ended up having to do, we we'll change that top mount more to the um, Toledo touring car top mount rather than that sort of mixture of super copper or something like that. But this is the Toledo touring car one. So what we had to do, we'll weld all the, chop the top off, weld a plate back on and put this adjustable top on. So how it works in the, the setup sheets on this, you literally, you set all the camber and the toe at the bottom, which will look how you do that, and this is just there to get your baseline, so if you want two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six, you sort of set it up on them. We've had to do things a little bit differently because all the parts of that weren't available, so we had to make our own little graduated <coughs> adjustment, and where we put these, obviously we didn't have any jigs at all like that, so where we put these had to be <coughs> where we thought they could go, so pardon me, I'm a frog in my throat. <coughs> so Dan just had to put these wherever he could. So basically, what you want to do if you're modifying top mounts is put it as far back as you can. That gets your caster. Um, and then we've got the adjustment on where they want us to be. And the ant ended up even, and we thought we'd end up quite far out. But when, when we put them where we put them, the, the sort of angle difference in the strut because these ones are straight, the angle difference and the difference in everything else, it all added up to basically them being back where, back in the inside on that one and one away, two away from the inside on that one to get them even. Then you've got a good baseline to start doing your adjustment at the bottom. And over the side while we're here, while this is all, this is all covered in swarf because we just painted it and then we realised that flipping it round this way, we wouldn't be able to get in it getting at the adjusters because there's a low and an high speed uh, bumper range, sorry, high speed uh, rebound, low speed bump that we needed to adjust there, that's the high speed bump. So we had to drill the holes in there and then I drilled straight to top of the stroke as well so I've damaged, I've damaged adjuster on that but anyway, forget about that, we'll gloss off at the fact that I've done that. So this here then is how you adjust the camber which Daniel cut to a video underneath so you can see how it works but this is the documentation that comes with it so basically if you want to increase the camber by 0.5 degrees you have to put a 6 mil shim in which is one of these so these literally you can just slacken the ball you don't have to take the ball joint off so this is replacing the ball joint like that and that goes into the hub that just gets this little nice little nut on the bottom so then all you do is literally just hook them in. So adding two of them in, it'd give you a degree of camber extra compared to what you had before. So you, you set it roughly on your top, then you get all your adjustments on the bottom. So this tells you here you've got six mil shim, so I've just put two in, so that gives us one degree of camber, would require 5.3 toe shim. So I'd need two of them 5.3s to keep that back in correction, so that's them. Which you'd have to measure these to be sure, but I know the thickest of them are them. So you literally 
whack two of them in, hook that in. You don't even need to mess about putting your tracking gauges on and all like that. You know, once you've done that, your camber's where you want it and your toe's back to where it was. So you've got your fine adjustment on your toe to get it, if you want half a degree or half a mil, however you want to measure it, half a mil, a toe out. But then, if you're making a quick change of track, you're like, oh, I want to whack some camber on, put one of these in, put one of them in. Absolute simplicity at its best. Obviously, it makes things a little bit more tricky when you're trying to even things out at, at the start of the job, but it's not impossible and it works really, really well. So we've got all different sizes when you want to get it finely adjusted. If you don't want to, if you run out of adjustment on the on the uh, the threads, but this is the best way of doing it. You just whack them in, and away you go. So it says some stuff about rear, but that's for the. Toledo touring cars, which have not got the fully adjustable rear like we've got, they've got sort of a bit of a different arrangement. So that's what we had to do with that. So we finally got the elephant's feet for the air jacks. So we said when they come, we'd have a quick look at what you do with them. And we've got a little use case for what we're doing here because we need to get up and have a look underneath it as well at some stuff we've done. So at the minute, it's sat on the air jacks. A bit naughty, you won't get underneath this as it is because we've not got the yellow sort of safety stands which they're what you've got to run if you're just running like this. So we'll get under quickly I'll show you what them yellow ones do and then we'll have a quick look at what the safety feet, uh, the elephant's feet do. And then this will be the first time we've used them so it could all go wrong. It might fall over but better off being on film than just doing it and car having a big dent inside. So, basically, these work like this. So, that's how they work. But, you have to get right under. I don't know why I'm demonstrating on rear one, because it's the hardest one to get in at. But you just put them in, like that, they click on, and they just drop air out, and they're safe. Can't go anywhere. I can leave air in, but better off dropping it on it, and then they can't. Cockle of it, come out. So then what we do here is, get them in like that. So that now, oh, it only just fits where that is. So that goes like that. I'm hoping it fits on properly. So we'll go around and do the other ones. So now what we do, this is your exhaust as well as your fill. So if you want it to just go down quick, just pull that as hard as you can, but we just want it to go down nice and steady. So, the rams have not disappeared. Why has that ram not disappeared? It's like it's wedged on it somehow. Right. So that slid across now, go around and do other two. So this is where it could all go wrong. Oh dear. This is sketchy. <laughs> Why is it not going up? <laughs> is it like going to fall over? Why has it not got round to that front one? That is sketchy, isn't it? So, if you watched carry on that occurred earlier, then you'll see that you could do with somebody who's done these before and not be first time you're using them be when you're recording a vlog because it nearly ended in tears. I think we nearly ended up with an Arosa and Leon coming together, not in the good kind. So basically what you'd have to do when you're getting these onto second stage is connect your lance up and turn your bottle on very slowly, which with this rubbish bottle that we need to replace is not 
easy because it's kind of like a safety valve that don't really want to come on slowly. So Rob, Rob come and did it. And what he said is, how they normally do it when they're doing GT Cup and what have you, is they'll have somebody either on each corner or at least on front while there's somebody at back and just as it's coming up, it's coming up a bit unevenly, just help it into position. So here's what it is. It nearly fell off, but looks pretty cool on these stands. So what we didn't get round to saying is these ones then replace the yellow stands. You could probably use them yellow ones, but these ones clip in nicely onto everything so it can't go anywhere. So basically this is like rock solid. You've got it. If you're doing an engine swap, you don't want to be this high, but you know, you're arriving on things, but if you've got to do something underneath, it's perfect. So, which leads us on to this here. This was a dog bone that we fabricated, the original one. I don't think we've got a picture of it. Maybe we have, we'll cut to it if we have. Um, but basically, we're, it were, that were rubbish, and then it was just a solid dog bone, a solid, uh, spherical bearing, kind of like this, but we've gone a we went, we went a little bit bigger just for the initial test because this was a city go dog bone when we got it, so we used this to get us going, but it was way too hard. But the problem we got is if we put a soft bush in here, this was the engine mount bushes, they were still absolutely rock hard, they were just way, way too much. Like, I think these are made out of like nylon or something like that. So I got onto Powerflex and they said that the Audi TT rear arm bushes, which would be what this would have if it didn't have the uh, spherical bearings for them bushes, for them arms, them had worked. We just had to drill out the mounts to a 12 mil, which wouldn't have normally been a problem, but the bolts are really a, a funny length that we didn't, we couldn't get hold of that way, come on. And uh, then in a bit, you can see we probably wouldn't have got the nut in. So what we ended up doing, we're turning some little ugly spaces that got a 10 mil hole and the right diameter to go inside the bush. But you can't even see these bushes now. Maybe you can see that one. Just hiding away a little purple bush, hiding there. So now we're still on the set sport mounts, which put, which put the engine really far back and really low. But instead of having solid rubber, We've now got a little bit of compliance in there and I've not actually started it since it was like this so we'll, uh, we'll get it back off these stands if we dare and the last bit of this video hopefully is going to be me driving away in it, well that might end up being tomorrow now, we'll, uh, a bit late in the day. So we've tidied the engine bay up a little bit, we've finally got the pipe all plumbed in that goes inside. Just sorted some of this uh, this out so the cables are not all uh, going to be chafing. Got the rain tray on, the wiper blades they've come from I think Latvia or somewhere like that so they need the stickers taking off and cleaning up. Some new wiper blades which the blades are the same, the arms are different for left and drive. So yeah, we've tidied all that up, that's all sorted. So yeah, some stuff inside now. I just need to get it cleaned up basically. Brakes are all bled up ready. We just the only other thing we need to do before this track day is get the alignment done. And what we did notice last time, there was just water getting in everywhere because it was raining the night before we went, so we sealed all the doors up. We sealed you you want to get past before I open this door even more. We've uh, sealed every little gap, all the door cards are all sealed in um, so no water can get in there. Every hole has got something plugging it up everywhere because there are just holes everywhere in this car. Ridiculous really. We've grip taped all the floor plan because you could easily fall over in that. Made a little dead pedal bent out of way for you. Uh, clutch foot. We've adjusted all pedals. We've had to fix a small portion of the brake pedal were a bit dangerous that if you've got loads of pad knock off or like when you've knocked the pistons back when you put new pads in and then you just want to pump them back out you pumped in it went too far basically there's like a little 
like a socket in a ball, it just fall out, so then you get no brake pedal. So we, we've made that so that can't happen. A bit of a design flaw. Uh, we've got the water and oil temp gauges in there. They're all sorted. The V box is in. I'm not sure if it was uh, all in and neatened up last time, but it's in. The pit to car radio systems going in. Lap timer for the pit stops. That's in. <sighs> what else have you done, Harry? What else have you been doing? <laughs> He's not done nothing. <laughs> He's not done nothing. You're on camera, Harry. Come on. Spit it out. What it's have all you all done? Wiring. Wiring. Loads of tidied up loads all of wiring. Venting. Power steering wiring. Yeah. We've steering. sorted power steering out. That's one. I knew there was something, Harry. That's why I asked you, Harry. I didn't want you to get stage fright. Oh. Just, just wanted an answer. So we finally oh, sorted the. Here, <laughs> finally sorted the power steering out because of that we had to bypass the controller. That's all sorted now. Uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to go. So this is going out on another test day, up for the final test day before the Berkey. So we'll get it off the stands and then we'll, uh, we'll get a video of what the engine mounts are like since we've changed them. So, one thing I meant to have done before we had all air jack related woes earlier on, we'll get under the car and have a look at the dog bone mount that uh, Paul and Dan's made. So we're just doing the alignment now. All working out all right, Matt? See, I think Matt's struggling a bit. That's what he's trying to tell me. But we're trying to get, we had a little bit of offset on the axle front to rear last time, which doesn't really make too much difference as long as you get it pulling in a straight line. So we're just trying to get that just so everything's perfect. So just look underneath. It's not at the highest that it could be, but this dog bone, go on, aim your camera up. This dog bone mount has got power flex bushes in that and we've got a spare set of them if we damaged them. So we made, obviously, new one of these, that new, and then a new one of them so that Old engine nicely, so we shouldn't have any trouble with that now. And uh, when we drop it down and we're getting it off, I'll jump in it <coughs> and we can see how much less it vibrates. Obviously, might be a bit hard to get it across on camera, but we'll put some on dash. And if it doesn't disappear in an instant, then you'll see. Uh, you'll see how it is. Bryce still hasn't actually started this up with new mounts. Um, Wow, we're here. You can just see to save Danny. Probably easier to come this way, Danny. But you can just see here. This is where them little uh, shims go to do the tracking adjustment for the toe, and then the shims for the camber. Go there. So we'll cut back to a picture of that box if people forgot what it looked like. So when it's ready for uh, me to drive it off, we'll come back. So. Matt's finished the alignment on it. We've managed to get 4.1 degrees camber here, which is just above what your crammer specify on these. They want you to be about four. 3.8 on that side. That seemed to work all right when we were out last time, but we didn't have the anti-roll bar, which is the next job. Um, while we had it on the ramp over there in the fab shop, we got Stuart at White Rose Welding to knock us this up. Just uh, cut out of oh, That's not on right good on a plasma cutter and then we've just riveted it in and folded it up so we're going to get some air coming in here and it's actually got somewhere to go now because it, um, it didn't work very good and um, yeah look at what it looks like underneath that's that so the engine bay is all ready to rock we just need to get it up and put these on so we finally got what we need. It's took a little bit of machining work. Leo does all our stuff's done this for us. So we've had some tiny little washers. Made as well to space them off there. And these, we're gonna to have to weld these little bits onto the end of a bolt that goes onto the strut. So when we've uh, got it up in air, later on we'll have a quick look, but it's probably not gonna be on this video because we, uh, it's getting a bit long in tooth. So these, I've got all these little intricate pieces on them that made an absolute pain to make, so we appreciate you got them done. 
this is the second iteration of them because the last one just couldn't get it to work so even though we 3d printed some and test fitted them and it still won't work but anyway so hopefully these just go straight on and away we go then the last thing we wanted to check or to demonstrate where how much better the vibrations are inside it's not going to help it Matt's got loads of little screws here, I'll gear them back Matt. Yeah, you grab them before they all disappear. But, basically, I'm sure it's not in gear. Battery's off. Battery's off. That power steering pump's quieter than the other one. So the idle speed's like... 14, 50 or something like that, so that smooths things out a little bit, but vibrating a bit, but definitely not as bad as it was before, absolutely shocking before, so hopefully we, um, it's a more enjoyable experience driving it when we're uh, out on tracks, it was really, really harsh, so we've got Finishing touches to do on this, just got to get it up in air, do the anti-roll bar, we go around every nut and bolt, make sure they're tight, then we paint, pen them up, where you can see if it's turned, so you don't have to keep spanner checking and tightening, 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 because then you end up snapping bolts. Um, so that's the next job, to get that sorted, and then I think, quick run up and down industrial estate again, and I think we're ready to go on a track day again, so... If you like what we've done on this video, give us a thumbs up, comment below, and in the description we'll have everything you could possibly need to know. I don't think the spec list on the website at the time of filming, but we're going to work as quick as we can and try and get to get that on there. But it's, it was constantly changing up until this point, so now we can uh, finalise it and get it on there. So, thank you.